All right, so welcome into the live stream today. Today is going to be a, a very interesting episode, hopefully, that will be breaking down a portfolio buildup that we're working on right now here on the show. And I think you guys are going to like it. We're going to be talking about L1s, diving into a lot of different tokens of what to maybe put together as a bottom buying portfolio. We'll dive into that. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Let's get into it today because there's a lot happening within these and I want to kind of break down the overall, um, kind of the overall plan here so you guys can kind of see it. Let me show you a couple of things here on how we put this together. So basically what this is, is uh, going to be a series of um, videos that we'll be doing. We're going to be doing one today. We'll do one on probably Monday or Tuesday next week and we're going to cycle these through a couple times a week. And essentially, we're building a portfolio that's based on a variety of different uh, categories. The categories are right here. Layer one tokens, that's part one. We'll do layer two tokens, metaverse and gaming, exchange tokens, payment tokens, that's where the XRP guys would be in, um, utility tokens, NFT ecosystem, and then audience picks. Now, number eight is very important because this is your chance to get a token in the list for consideration. The idea is, is that we're going to have about 30 tokens overall. So if a token doesn't make it into uh, the show, what we need you to do is uh, to make sure and put the token in the comments. You know, so my personal pick is, you know, H bar, whatever it might be, just put it in the comments, not in the sidebar for uh, the chat or for the questions, but in the comments, because that's how we'll be able to determine how we collect that data from each show to determine what audience picks we're going to look at. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to break this down into three. Uh, it's, it's very simple to understand of how we're going to build this. We're going to look at investment targets, targets overall, about 30 tokens. We're going to do what, what is called uh, stack ranking, which simply means that we take the top 80% based on sentiment uh, and uh, three basic areas. And we'll show you about what that is. So CP, CPI monthly average score for those tokens that we'll be looking at. My opinion score from one to 10, so it could be a 8.3, a 6.5, okay? And then your audience opinion based on the polls that we're doing right here on the show today. And then the investment plan is very simple. We're gonna take 20K, 10K of that's gonna go into Bitcoin and ETH, and then 10K is gonna be based on this portfolio add-in. That is basically the program. Uh, so it is a crypto portfolio that is really built around buying the bottom and how to you know, get into the next level. So we'll obviously get Bitcoin and ETH in there, but we're going to get into a lot of these other projects that you guys love. And you've uh, been asking, you know, hey, let's do a video on uh, portfolio analysis and all that good stuff. Let's break down the first token uh, today, and that is Solana, quickly on a couple of news items with Solana. And that is they're making a crypto phone now with help from Essential Engineers, former Essential Engineers, which is the awesome uh, phone and interesting stuff here. The question will be is, in my opinion, is will this get any kind of traction? You know, when you think about a phone like this, I always look back to the Facebook phone, the Amazon phone, you know, many of the phones that have attempted to try to make the break into the market to take on Android and Apple. But, you know, this one's a bit different. I mean, it, it is, um, you know, it does have some, you know, very similar specs to a traditional uh, Android phone system is built on Android, but it's going to be like, you know, 6.7 inch, 512 of storage, 12 gig of RAM. So it's, you know, pretty good and respectable. I think the key will be is how this plays into use case and what this could be around wallets. So the devices for people that are entrenched in the universe crypto wallets, <clears throat> Web3 and NFTs. So it'll come in a unique feature, support and decentralized apps and rely on Solana's blockchain which at least uh, briefly um, is rivaling, you know, Ethereum. And how all that uh, will play into it, uh, including marketplaces. So you have Ma Magic Eden, of course, Solana Wallet Maker, Phantom, uh, and Cryptocurrency Exchange, Orca. So lots happening. I think we'll see a lot of other dApps coming to it. Um, pretty cool. You know, it's a very interesting move by Solana. And I think it is uh, an interesting one in the way that, because mobile has kind of taken over crypto and the essence of trading, how you follow up, adapts themselves. A lot of the inter intricacies around mobile and crypto have kind of merged together. So pretty cool. Uh, so here's awesome. They talked a little bit about their LV1 smartphone. 
um, succumbing to the crypto gimmick as Solana Saga, we'll call that. And uh, there's a couple of break-ins here. I want to kind of show a couple of tweets here. They're partnerships, so it's not necessarily truly a Solana, but it is going to be an Android mobile phone. And if you look at some of the specs here, let me jump to their specs, because this was kind of cool. If I can scroll down here and take a look, their website is pretty cool, and this is Solana Mobile. And you'll get a chance to see it here in a second as it does its reveal. And it's pretty cool. You have to scroll forever to do this. And it's, there you go. And it gets into the launch event, how the mobile stack is going to work, kind of the relationship concept they're going to have there. They're going to build it out with SDK so other developers can start to build on this. Um, the fact that it is, it's a thousand dollar phone. So interesting stuff. Obviously Sega Pass. Saga Pass, excuse me, Saga Pass, possibly coming soon. NFTs will start to play into this. I think this will be an interesting move for Solana for sure. The other thing is uh, Avalanche is another token we're going to take a look at today. And just recently, Avalanche, of course, climbing to 12-day high on Friday. Uh, and this was really in a push for what Avalanche in general, remember the Avalanche ecosystem is built around a couple of key things. And one of the things that I talk about here on the show a lot is kind of this ability to take a system, meaning Web2 and what's happening in traditional, all things web, whether it's e-commerce, you know, marketing, media, you name it, name the, the industry, including gaming, and be able to converge that into a Web3 platform. And that is really kind of the whole goal of what Avalanche is trying to do. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about Avalanche, and just, just as you guys know, if you jump into our channel and just search these token names, you'll find a slew of videos. In many cases, many of our um, interviews, because we've done uh, Solana interviews, Avalanche interviews. Uh, we haven't had Near Protocol on the show. They're in the show today. Um, and then we've, been had, we've had the Cardano, some of the Cardano team on. Uh, as well. So check out those if you don't, maybe you're new to crypto and you're kind of understand or getting into layer ones maybe for the first time. Uh, so be on the lookout. But the point is, is with Avalanche, they have that capability of truly, truly being a, uh, a gateway to Web3 and what we may see in terms of, you know, kind of new applications and real use cases, which is going to be a big factor here. Uh, and that is something to me that is very important when I look at kind of midterm to long term. And the portfolio that I'm looking to put together here is a midterm to long term. What I simply mean by that is that what I buy and put in this portfolio, we're probably going to hold through the next bull run. Now, we may exit on some of these early in the bull run, but the primary goal is to get these at the bottom and start holding through uh, the, the final phases as we start to see this bear cycle play out over the next uh, you know 12 months. Near Protocol, they've got a lot happening. I was just looking at their uh, their blog, uh, which I would recommend following. You know, they've got their they do a foundation update. They did a ton of uh, community focus elements within it. Uh, they did their town hall and they're very, very focused on community and kind of uh, a big part of what they're trying to build as a layer one. Again, not necessarily an ADA or you know, an avalanche, or if you think about kind of the Ethereum killers that are uh, out there, Near is, is much more of a community kind of approach. And, uh, and what they're trying to do, I think, in general is very solid. The other thing that they've done is they launched their smart contract audit, and that was just here recently. So they're making the right kind of moves. That's also why we've seen a little bit of movement with Near Protocol uh, as well. Of course, rounding out the top four uh, is Cardano. Now, interestingly enough, Cardano and Charles Hoskinson kind of went into DC and did a little bit of uh, song and dance and ended up kind of catching, I think, the lawmakers by surprise and kind of stole the show. So uh, good for Charles and good for Cardano and the community because I think that is something that we need is a really good representative that can explain and kind of, I don't want to say dumb down, but get it into an understanding uh, focus of how regulators can truly take on regulation in general in crypto itself. He pulled a couple of things here, uh, and he made some really good uh, statements here. This was in reference to uh, the, um, the review there that they were going into. And a statement uh, he said is, 
you know, in his capacity as expert witness, he was trying to make, you know, making sure that they didn't get lost in, in this whole thing around crypto in terms of commodity and all that. So he stated, therefore, regulation should focus on principles rather than formulating particular rules for individual events. The Cardano uh, founder also gave in deciding on which risks to safeguard against, what right users should have, and how to use those tools for the best good. Um, The other thing he talks about, when you look at cryptocurrencies in general, view them as financial stem cells. They're, They're more fundamental than a particular category like a currency or commodity. And that is, that's the interesting point here is he's making is that Maybe these don't necessarily need a classification just yet because it's so early in the development of so many of these projects that you could be stifling innovation. And I think that's a very good strategy for the cryptocurrency industry to take with DC because that's the one thing that DC does not want to do is get caught in front of a freight train that is stifling innovation and causing problems down uh, you know, down the road. He also goes on and says, to that end, uh, what trumps the binary argument is a holistic approach that takes into account public policy considerations based on what regulators want to achieve, such as sanctions and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do think it would be wise to say, it, it is, is it a security or a commodity or fall into the temptation of those who are more, uh, per, you know, permissive regulator or also what uh, they want to do in terms of arbitrage. So better, better than just doing that, take a step back, and look at it from a standpoint of let's just put some boundaries and some safety rails on this because most likely ETH and Bitcoin will fall into the commodity uh, guidance area. Make sure and hit like on the video. This is uh, the number one way we get a a feedback from you guys. Now, we are going to pull the poll up here shortly. And the way the poll works is this is your contribution to the portfolio. And what it simply means is uh, we're going to be looking at the overall poll results in each of these segments breaking down all these different ones. Uh, that will be one third of that score, uh, going back to our, you know, the way we're building it, is one third of the score. And when we get to that point, uh, we'll do the stack ranking. So average CPI for the month, uh, my score, you know, one through 10, uh, and then the scores from the audience participation uh, here on each show. We average those together. There's your overall score. Boom, uh, best case of 30 points. And uh, we'll take those, and that's how uh, we get into those. Uh, make sure and put your questions over on the side. We will try to get some of those. Uh, there's quite a few people, I think, talking about uh, Solana along with some other things. I do want to thank our uh, sponsor today, and I Trust Capital. And if you're looking at uh, this time of the market, is being able to get into tokens and projects at the bottom, this is one of the best strategies to take in terms of a long-term approach. And that is when you get into IRAs and looking at a crypto IRA is the key, one of the key, I think, financial instruments to really kind of taking it to the next level. It's one of the many things that you can be doing. There are some cool things within the iTrust uh, platform that I love. You can buy and sell pretty much within the account. So it's kind of a self-directed. You also have the capacity to really get into a lot of different assets. They have pretty much about everything you might want. If you want to see everything, just get, click on that. You'll go into all the assets, including precious metals uh, and cryptocurrencies as well. So obviously there's Algorand, Avalanche, Axie, Bitcoin, Chainlink, Cosmos. There's some great ones in here. You know, I, I, I'm always surprised at just how far they have come in terms of overall tokens that are available. So make sure and use our funding reward and our link because it will give you 100 bucks. Uh, in a funny reward uh, to get into it. Let's take a quick look at Bitcoin and then we'll jump into some sentiment data here on on, uh, these three. Bitcoin's kind of coming out right here. Not bad for, uh, this is on the four hour, so really since the 18th, a nice little slight move, uh, but holding in at around 21K, so good stuff there. When you look at Avalanche, kind of a scenario right now that they've had a little bit of a move here. Um... Not tremendous, but uh, a pretty good move right here from the 18th. Let's take a look at that growth. We'll take a look at sentiment there as well. So holding on at about 41%, so nice little move there. And then if we take a look at near protocol, this is another one that seems to be starting to have a little bit of an uprun right now. If you look at the market cipher, 
And a little bit, it's kind of coming into the money, even though it's dipping out right now. Uh, RSI is coming up. Um, money flow is at least starting to come back in. You've got a pretty good move there if you are looking to invest. So we're, we're looking for a timing uh, to get into these tokens too. So let's take a look on that short run right there. 15% right there. So not bad in the day. Let's take a look in the 24. And uh, what do we got here? Yeah, not too much, uh, right about there. What was that? Still a 15%, yeah, so not, not tremendous here. But again, what we're looking for, guys, when we build this, this uh, model out, and as we uh, get the winners for each show, so most likely we'll have one winner comes out of this show that we'll be able to see. All four might make the ranking of those 30 tokens to be looked at. We'll jettison out the lower 20%. And then that will be our mix. And we'll take that 10K, divide it up based on the stack ranking. And that's our investment. We'll also come back to this portfolio and take a look later. I want to take a look at Cardano. Cardano, of course, had some really crazy upsides uh, over the past few weeks. Um, and not too bad, but uh, kind of flattening out a little bit. What do we have here on growth right now at 8%? Everything's kind of up a little bit on it. It's running around 49 cents. We did a trade on Cardano I guess about 10 days ago when it had hit 43 and then jacked up, um, you know, that's when we went back here. We actually did it right there. That was our, our trade on Cardano. If you guys want to get into a community, because this is something we do share in our community, is um, in our Diamond Circle or in our Mastermind group. The Mastermind group, uh, if you go to our website, you'll be able to find it. And the Mastermind group is very simple. Uh, you join, you get into a private Slack group, and we're communicating in there all the time, usually with our real-time research and also our general uh, data as well. So uh, it's a great great place to kind of get into. You can kind of see Cardano kind of uh, going a little bit flat here right now, but might be a good opportunity if we start to see a little bit of downside here, and we'll take a look at sentiment uh, here in a second. And then uh, I've been doing some analysis here on Solana to kind of break this out just a little bit. This is on the four hour. And you've got Solana coming up because they were at a 60 back here on the 20th. Uh, they moved to a 61. Uh, and then they're now at a 62 overall sentiment. Look at AMP score going from a 56 to a 60 right here. So you look at growth on and on just scoring out right here on that day. Where are we on our move if we've got in there? So a nice 25% up on Solana. So good for a short term. Uh, these are over our last three uh, sentiment drops that we do. And remember, we do these on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the Crypto Power Index uh, to give us kind of these um, leading indicators. Some kind, some cases we'll hit these. Uh, and you can kind of get on some of these. Obviously, we drop these in uh, to the CPI itself. Let's jump over to the CPI. Uh, before we do that, make sure and like the video. And of course, get your questions over in on the side. We will definitely bring it up. Remember, in the comments below right now, so we've got four tokens on the list right now. You've got projects that you want in. Um, drop them in the comments below because we'll glean out of that and be able to put that into the final show that we'll do in this series over the next three weeks. And that will be where we do all of the additional tokens that will be under review. And again, audience participation, the number of poll respondents will help weight the audience score and the percentage of winners based on who number one two, through four is, is gonna help us in being able to calculate uh, that portion of the score because it's 33%. Take a look at it. This is kind of a way to kind of break down fundamentals. So you got to have a little bit of um, basically that the network effect in there. Let's take a look at the CPI real quick and we'll see because we just dropped these numbers this morning. Overall market is actually trending slightly up. Let's take a look here on overall sentiment. Slightly up a little bit. Again, the market has been up. So overall markets, I don't really... Um, I like to see it because it does give me kind of a, a bigger picture. Uh, but typically what I want to see is getting into the top cryptos and take a look at those individually. So I'm going to take a look at uh, Solana real quick. And you've got Solana right here. Um, 
you know, this was something we talked about earlier, in, actually the last couple of weeks. We had not seen some of these tokens in the 50s before. Let me zoom up on that for you guys. Um, and Solana, this was back on the 15th. It had uh, bottomed out, and then we started to see this run up right here. So sentiment was definitely pointing in the right direction, but the big indicator was right here, which was back on, that was Friday, Monday, or actually Monday, Wednesday, and then here we are on Friday. Uh, this is the move week for Solana, so we are constantly watching these against overall uh, in the market for sure. And again, remember these are um, pretty interesting because they do help me at least in being able to break down where moves are taking. Let me take a look further at Avalanche right here. Avalanche slight move up also. Uh, also slight move up here. Remember they had that big dip right here. This was a big uh, drop in the Avalanche overall uh, token volume and also in the overall price as well. And then let's take a look here, go back here and take a look at Cardano. Now this is interesting here. So Cardano is slipping just a little bit on sentiment it's intersecting on amplification, meaning underscoring the overall. Not a bad thing, because uh, it has had its nice little run up right here. This was really Cardano's move. It went a little flat, and then we've seen since then a little bit of a downward trend on Cardano. But again, all these tokens don't necessarily move at the same time. So key uh, is always going to be timing uh, and how we play these out for sure. So these are the ones we're looking at to try to break it out. Let's take a look at the poll, and then we'll know kind of our, our rundown, at least for this show. All right, so where are we today? We've got 554 votes, and you guys can til still continue to vote through the end of the show while we take questions. But 555 votes, uh, Cardano coming in at 41%, Avalanche coming in number two at 23, and Solana, 21. I'm really That's interesting. And then near protocol, 16%. Everybody's respectable here, I think, in general for layer ones, at least out of this group. Obviously, we're missing several that you guys are going to want us to bring in. You can only, and this is a good exercise because what I'm hoping to do with this is teach you guys how to drill down. And you have to have some sort of mechanism or you know mental hoop that you go through to be able to identify what it is that you're going to drill down into. And I think that's the, the key here. Now remember, these are market movers. Market movers will bring in data, insights, even sentiment, where you guys get a chance to see some of our CPI data. Not investment advice. This is really us giving you guys kind of a guidebook uh, to go to the next level. And um, basic, you know, basic rules are really uh, applicable here. Make sure that you have a good risk tolerance for this. Remember, these are all very speculative you know, scenarios, especially in the altcoins, and especially when we get into NFTs and crypto, and uh, excuse me, on metaverse and gaming. Be on the lookout for those, because that is, um, those are highly speculative, but also can have big wins if you have the fortitude to kind of drive through the down markets. Let's get into a few questions, and we'll go. Real talk, uh, Salam, too big to fail. Again, you know, I talk about Solana a lot here in the sense that I'm highly um, critical, but also optimistic. The my critical nature is just that you know I I don't like projects that stay in beta for a long time, and I don't like projects that have these continuous fail points. At some point, the developers do have to kind of do it. Stop shilling Cardano. I love it. You obviously have not watched my Cardano videos because I have been known as the futter of Cardano's. Cardano. In fact, Mr. Hoskinson himself said I was the master futter of Cardano. So I try to give you guys both sides of the plate here. Look at the good, look at the bad, weigh it out, and then kind of you know put it into the, that kind of position, and, and hopefully it's there. Uh, you can't, I, you cannot deny where Cardano is, but at the same time, you can always question where Cardano is because of their speed. All right, and uh, all right, so we got XRP and we got Hex in there. I just don't know. I'm not going there, guys. Hex is not something you should be putting your money in. So I'm sorry. I know the Hex guys are not going to like that. Um, Saul, faulty, centralized, yes, full of VCs, perfect project. <laughs> You guys are definitely salty today. I like it when you get salty out there. If ETH went offline as much as Solana, how much are you? Okay. 
Yeah, you guys are definitely uh, not on the soul camp. There's some definitely penetration here. Guess what, guys? You're going to get a chance to be able to play into this because your votes count on all of this. So it's going to be my picks, the CPI overall data, and your picks, and uh, it's going to be cool. So lots of comments coming in for stuff. Uh, Jan, uh, it's not timing the market, it's the time in the market. Would agree. All of you need is five, 95% Shiba and 5% Doge. The, uh, the bone broth is in there going crazy. I do not recommend that bone broth. I suggest that you might jump out into a little Bitcoin, maybe some ETH, you know, get your portfolio on, a, on the side of, on the good, on the, you know, the side of good here for sure. Uh, I got all of which I got in November. Uh, thoughts on filling bags and uh, to, bought too early. Split amongst four benefit discount prices on the two. That's good. I think the key here is as we get into a lot of these, um, we are going to see some very interesting moves in some of these. We also may see some consolidations. So be aware of that because as it's going to get worse, guys. It's going to get worse before I feel like it gets better. And with that, a lot of these premium projects, um, you know, Layer 1s, you mentioned Terry Ball there, Lair, you know, talking about Layer Zeros. Um, these are ones that uh, definitely, I think, will be interesting to watch in the sense that they could combine. We could see some consolidation and really kind of uh, change the, the landscape of what altcoins and a lot of these vehicles that we'll be using in, in I think, in utility in the next cycle through, two to three years, a lot more utility for sure. Uh, thoughts on optimism? We've looked at it. What are your? Uh, what about layer zeros? Yes, we're going to have some layer zeros that we'll talk about. We'll break that down for you. Uh, Paul doesn't talk anything about Cosmo. Actually, Adam is a, a token I hold, um, and I like Adam. Adam was in our list of overall product because there's many categories there uh, for Cosmos. Cosmos was in there. Dot is in. They're just not in this list. They're in our layer twos. Um, so good deal. Why put up pulse when you know ADA will reign supreme? Well, because it's a weighted algorithm that we're putting against this list. And when you do that, ADA cannot win by pure volume. It has to win by overall market sentiment, uh, my score, and then your score. By doing that, it gives us a little bit more validity in how we're trying to put approach on this. I'm trying to wait out whether or not the whole effect of crypto, you know, the network effect, if it truly has the kind of impact on the market that, that we are seeing continuously in these, in these cult-like communities. Not that I'm calling anybody cult-like, but they, they act a lot like that. Rob, I like the idea of a, uh, a 0.3 blockchain phone, but I'm not sure uh, I would buy Solana. You're like me. I mean, it's uh, it's one that I'm in and out on. You know, uh, if you get too many calls, <laughs> you get too many calls, I will shut down. I like it. I'm waiting for GameStop phone. Okay, that's cool. And then we got people. Yeah, this is this could be a publicity stunt. Um, the phone competition is high. My my uh, analysis on this is again a bit you know speculative. I'm gonna have. Um, James with Invest Answers on the show. We're going to try to get him on next week. And if you're not a Solana lover, and like me, because I'm going to try to get him to convince me to, to look at Solana long term, because I don't have it in my long term bag. I have it as, as a trade bag. Um, it's a great project. I, I love to see the things that they're doing and just, you know, it's just not there. But I want him to help me and our audience really dis, just jump into why this works over some of these others. And I'm gonna, you know, we'll get a case for it. HBAR could be there. Uh, it was in our uh, list. I can't remember if it made our, our cut, but if it didn't, put it in the comments below, not in the side chat, but in the comments, uh, because that's where we're gonna pull from uh, the each show uh, some tokens that we can uh, put into the bulk group at the end, which is the audience selection episode. Phantom, no future. I'm just not a big fan of Phantom. I think the fact that it is over-centralized, um, that's the only reason. I mean, and I know there's a lot of tokens that are over-centralized, many of those. Uh, you should watch our episodes where we break down some of the Masari data. Um, it's a good one that kind of gives you a lot more insight to where some of these things are going. I might have that. Let me look and see if I have the Masari data for you guys. 
let's see here, allocations. Is this the latest one? This was August. Yeah, I mean, this is last year, but this has changed quite a bit. Uh, obviously, the, the, iso the isolation we were talking about was Terra at the time showing this, but you look at Solana, a little bit uh, too heavy on allocation, uh, centralized. And then you look at Phantom right here, 53%. This was back year, last year in August. So uh, we do have updated data on this, but check out Masari's website. They do a lot of this kind of stuff uh, that breaks it down. Algorand, man, Algorand, it's such a great product. It, and it, it is a project, I, it's one that I feel like should be in this group. Um, so I hope that you guys, the Algorand team and uh, lovers out there, put it in the comments, drop it in there. I'd love to see it in that audience selection group. Best layer one, uh, one token is Avalanche. We're building uh, play to earn, FPS, e-game, all on the Avalanche chain. The only problem is, is we, did, we missed out on the ape. Uh, project. So that would have been the killer component if Avalanche had been able to score that one. All right, you guys are doing great out there. Listen, this should be an interesting weekend. Now we're up to 682 votes. Cardano is pulling away here at 42%. Do not fear Avalancheans, near protocol team, and the Solanians. Um, the key here again, overall market sentiment, my score, 1 to 10, and audience. We'll combine those all up. We'll stack rank those. You'll start to see our stack ranking in our next show as we put that together next week for you. So you get a chance to see, because it will, once I see something high enough in the stack rank, we're gonna be able to pull the trigger on one. So we're gonna try to invest as we go along. Uh, as we get closer to the bottom of the stack ranking, we have to be careful because some of them might get jettisoned out so we can't um, buy at that time. That last couple of shows is gonna be very critical to get those in there. All right, you guys are, if you're not in our Diamond Circle already, get in there. It's free. It's easy to join. Just click the link below. And of course, uh, if you're listening in over on the podcast right now, what we just went through, all this, these mental gymnastics, um, is you can only experience this here on the show, on the YouTube show. So you got to jump over here to YouTube, search the network, Paul Barron Network, you'll find us, and then click subscribe first. Then turn on that little bell. You'll get notified of these live streams just like this, and that way you've got it. It'll give you notifications, all that kind of stuff. And of course, if you want to hit me up out on Twitter, it's at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.